Be glad. Let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Rejoice. Let blessed Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. These beautiful words from the hymn so beautifully proclaimed and sang by Nora are the setting and the tone for the liturgy this evening. On this night, we indeed rejoice. The resurrection of the Lord is the foundation of our Christian faith. Christ is risen. Our faith is not in vain. Our hope is certain. Tonight we gather to listen again to our family story, a story of faith culminating in the Lord's resurrection. Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate the Lord's power over sin and death. The Easter liturgy and The Easter symbol or the Easter season are alive with symbols. One of the most meaningful symbols is the new fire which we blessed. The fire created the light of the Paschal candle, the symbol of Christ risen triumphant from the dead. The candle's flickering flame calls to mind our own baptism At our baptism, a a candle was entrusted to our parents with the admonition to receive the light of Christ and to keep it burning brightly so that the flickering flame of faith would be kept alive. This is our prayer this evening as well. As we gathered in the darkness, as we awaited anew the light of Christ, symbolized by Easter fire and the Paschal candle. As the candle was lit from the new fire, we prayed, may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our minds and hearts. May we be steadfast in our faith and courageous in our hope The candles held during the exultant will be lit again from the Easter flame when we renew our baptismal promises. The flame of faith is given to you again to be kept burning brightly so that when the Lord comes, you will be ready to meet him face to face. The exultant is a wonderful hymn of praise to God for all that he has done for us. It is also a hymn of encouragement. We are people of the light who have the risen Christ within us. There is no reason for us to fear the dark of the night. Moreover, the darkness of evil is dispelled in our world today because we are bearers of the light of Christ as signified by the lighted candles that we hold this evening. As vessels of the light of faith we received in baptism, the light of the Easter candle is extended into our world. Imagine, as dry and lifeless as our world can seem at times, as troubled as our church is in our times, And as heavy as your personal burdens may be, we carry within us the spark that can set the world on fire with God's divine mercy and love. We are agents of evangelization. Pope Francis calls us missionary disciples, sent forth to proclaim the joy of the gospel and the incredible news of Jesus' love and mercy. We are called to go forth to proclaim with our words and the witness of our lives, our faith in Christ, 
the light who dispels the darkness. With a renewed vigor and enthusiasm, we live as people of the light. Our announcement of Christ's resurrection in the present moment continues the relay that began when Mary Magdalene and the other women found the empty tomb. Two men in dazzling garments said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. The women ran from the tomb and announced all that they had seen and heard. Like the pillar of fire and the column of cloud that went before the Israelites on their journey from Egypt, so now the risen Lord goes before us on our exodus journey from death to new life. Pope Benedict XVI a few years ago said, Easter does not work magic. Just as the Israelites found the desert awaiting them on the far side of the Red Sea, so the church after the resurrection always finds history filled with joy and hope, grief and anguish. And yet this history is changed it is marked by a new and eternal covenant. It is truly open to the future. And so, like the early disciples, we embrace the mission of that first Easter morning and that of our own baptism, to be witnesses of the resurrection and to keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts. Do not be discouraged by the challenges of living in a society in which the business of life seems to drown out silence and contemplation of belief. Defend the citadel of your heart because the greatest gift that you have been given by God is the gift of faith in Jesus Christ who is risen today. Do not be discouraged by the many painful situations that plague our world. Deprivation, hunger, disease, war, violence. Do not be discouraged that those who should protect and care for others, especially the most vulnerable among us, our children, have sinned and failed to do so. For all of this, Christ died and rose. He died on account of sin, including our own. He rose for the redemption of history, including our own. The resurrection of Jesus has unleashed forever in the world the power of God's love and mercy. Here at the Eucharist, we celebrate the immense power that derives from Christ's resurrection and that has entered the world and taken possession of our hearts, mind, and consciences. This power is the power to respond to God's love, to show mercy and forgiveness to others, and to serve one another. Christ is risen and he walks with us. With him we can faithfully carry out our task on earth with our eyes fixed on heaven. And so to each of you, your families and loved ones, I wish the peace of the risen Christ. May Christ fill your heart and your home with the most precious of all gifts. Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. Amen. Alleluia.